heads bowed on our heads in prayers. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise and all the honor. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. Spirit of the living God, we invite you. Come and take total control. Feel this place. Speak through your word. Transform our lives. Establish us in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. I just want you to help me and say, Holy Spirit, I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Amen. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's the one that came when Jesus left. Hallelujah. And we have a blessed promise that he will never leave us. He will never... He will never leave us. He will, he will never leave us. He will never leave us. And he will never leave you. He's here with you. He will never. He's, he's, he's the one called to walk alongside you. He's, he's the one called to walk alongside you. He's the one that comforts you when everyone is gone. When you don't know what to do, when you've run out of thoughts, the Holy Spirit is there with you. Hallelujah. So we ought to develop a, a habit of communion with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, in a marriage, uh, women like to, for you to talk to them. Amen. If, if you don't talk to them, because they like to talk, if you don't talk, sometimes they're not happy. How many of, if you are, can I get a witness in the house? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. The reason is because the, the wife is a help. Meet. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, he is our helper. You, you cannot be going through something and you have a helper, you're not talking. You know, it's almost like you're grieving you know what I mean? Just explain the situation to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I need help. Because he's right there with you. Amen? He's right there with you. If you develop that habit, you'll begin to get answers. Because he is the one that has been called to comfort. When I, when I do funerals, also I tell people that, listen, after this, to the bereaved, after everything is done... You know, we, we've cried with you. We all go home and we sleep on our beds and you'll be by yourself. But know that you're not by yourself. You have the Holy Spirit. And so in the darkest hour, when you've run out of thoughts, just sing to him. Just ask him for help. Because the Holy Spirit is always there. Hallelujah. When the husband is not there, when the wife is not there, the Holy Spirit is there. He will never leave nor forsake you. Praise God. And so we need him in everything we do, in our studies. The Bible says he will teach us all things. Not just spiritual things, but all things. Amen. If you are a child, you are in school, you are struggling with mathematics, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to teach you. Amen. Amen. He started trigonometry before your teacher went to school. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. May God help us to develop an intimate relationship and communion with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. For the Christian life is to be lived in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. When we are weak, he is our strength. Hallelujah. And Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit throughout his ministry. So you and I ought to depend on him. There was nothing Jesus did. For 33 and a half years, without the Holy Spirit, nothing that he did. He depended wholly. Hallelujah. And so we depend on him this morning to open up the scriptures to us. So we will be looking at a subject that I was, uh, the Spirit of God woke me up this morning. I wasn't intending to preach on this. And so when he woke me up and uh, put the book of Ruth so we'll go to the book of Ruth, and we will look at the book of Ruth. 
and we just want to look at the loyalty of this woman. So if you want to title this message, you can title it, The Loyalty of Ruth. The Loyalty of Ruth. And we'll start from Ruth chapter 1. And we'll learn some lessons from this, from this woman. The book of Ruth is a book of, it's a story of redemption. Amen. It's a story of a Moabite woman. A story of a woman that was disconnected from God. She was not part of the commonwealth of the kingdom of Israel. But because of loyalty... She didn't just become a, a servant of God, but she became one of the great grandmothers, great great grandmothers of the Lord Jesus Christ because of loyalty. So let's read. The Bible says, In the days, that, uh, days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Hallelujah. So they were from the tribe of Judah. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Next verse. Now, Elimelech, Naomi's wife, uh, Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth, after they had lived there about ten years. Both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and his daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where they had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you, as you have shown to the dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. And said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me. Even if I had a husband tonight, and then gave birth to sons. Would you wait until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this, they wept again. Then Opa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. Praise the Lord. We see a woman 
with a husband that goes down because of circumstances. And circumstances will cause people to move. Amen? Amen. And I tell people, if you are an immigrant here, you have to know that God has a purpose for you. Amen? Amen. God might use circumstances. A lot of people think they are economic migrants. They've come to look for greener pastures. But that is one side of the story. The fact of the matter is that God has a purpose for you. Hallelujah. In this land of Canada. Amen. The, God, uh, the Lord brought you here for a divine purpose. And so you have to remind yourself. Because if not, you'll be running after the dollar sign. Whereas you have a divine purpose that is more noble than dollars. Hallelujah. So let's look at this woman and her loyalty to this woman, Ruth, that the whole book is dedicated to her. So she comes into this family, and then what happens? Her husband passes away, and the other man, her brother-in-law, also passes away. And then Naomi begins to convince them and said, the Lord hand has been against me. The first point I want us to note here is that your loyalty will be tested. Now, let me say this, that God will always use a man to bless you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God will use a man. When God wants to bless you, he will use a man. And your relationship, how you relate to that person will determine whether that blessing will be fulfilled, will arrive at your doorstep. Hallelujah. And it's the same thing. When Satan wants to destroy someone, he puts a Judas Iscariot, isn't it? Yeah. So, generally speaking, God blesses people by using people. So, relationships are very, very important. And so the first thing is that you have to recognize those that God has called into your life. Hallelujah. As destiny helpers. As we get older, we have to recognize and ask God to show us the relationships that are strategic for, our, for the fulfillment of our destiny. Because you have some people that struggle with relationships. They sabotage every relationship. But there are some relationships that will take you into your destiny. And so Naomi was one of such people that was put in the life of Ruth. And so even when Ruth's husband passed away, what happened? Naomi held both of them and said, my, 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 my daughters... You know, you know what has happened. God has been bitter. In fact, when she went back, they wanted to call her Naomi. He said, no, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Bitterness. For God, uh, God has, been, 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 has dealt. His hand has dealt. Uh, 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 what's the word? Has harshly against me. And I'm bitter. Don't call, so don't call me Naomi. But this is what happened. So she said, listen, let's go back. But as they begin to go, she looked at her daughter-in-law. Something comes into her mind. She said, no, I can't go with these two. What will I do with them? I don't have any more sons. And he, she said, listen, go back. Go back. I'm praying for you guys. You will have, what? Husbands. And because you have been good to me, you have been loyal to me, may God deal with you ever so well with so many blessings. And two of them, you see, this is the test. This is a test. Because both of them were loyal, but it came a time, hallelujah, where their loyalty was tested. How far can you go with me? Because you see, it wasn't so much, there's something that, please leave, uh, leave the scripture on, 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 on the, leave our scripture. 
going back was going back not just to the father's house, but it was going back to their God. Let's, let's go back to, 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 to verse 14, I believe. It was going back to their God. Look, look for that verse and, and, and okay. No, no, no. I'm looking. For, is it 15? 15. Let's see 15. It says, look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. So it wasn't just going back to the people. It was going back to the gods that they used to serve. But Ruth, something within her. And you know, loyalty, first of all, is in the heart. Amen? She had, she had made up in her heart that she was not going to leave Naomi. Her mother-in-law. She had decided. So no amount of persuasion. So this was the test. Because Opa, after much persuasion, Opa said, okay, I'm going back. I'm going back. And she left. And then Naomi looked at Ruth and said, are you not going back as your sister-in-law has gone back? And she said, not so. He said, listen, your people will be my people. And most importantly, what? Your God shall be my God. Loyalty. It's in the heart. Because you'll be tested. Identify. Each time you have to pray because God will always use somebody to open the door for you. And you'll be tested in many ways. This morning in the Bible studies, we're talking about certain tests of loyalty when you're corrected. When you're corrected. The person might be a man of God. It might be somebody that God will use to open the door, a father. And you'll be tested where your loyalty, because it will, loyalty, it will always be, we are always going through a test. May God help us to pass the test. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You have some people, once they are corrected, they, they, they are smiling until you correct them. And they say, how dare you? And they leave, right? And so, this was the test. This was the test. Opa failed that test and went. But she said, listen, where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Where you sleep, your people will be my people and your God shall be my God. Amen. So, I want you to be very sensitive to the people that God brings into your life. Yes. Be very sensitive. And ask God, God, why did you bring this person in my life? And once you know why God brought them, then you have to decide now that you will pay the price. Humble yourself and you will stick with that person. The Bible talks about Elisha, that Elisha was the one that poured water on the hands of Elijah. And guess what? When it was time for the mantle to be passed, it was on Elisha. He received a double portion because he stuck with him. And we know the story, how that the prophets came to Elisha and said, do you know that God is about to take your master? He said, I know, keep quiet. Who has your opinion? And then he went again. Another prophet, the prophet said, do you know that God is about to take your master? He said, did I ask you? Keep quiet. And he was following his master. And then his master said, go. He said, I'm not leaving you. He said, I am not leaving you, Elijah. And Elijah turned and said, what do you want? He said, I want the double portion. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he wanted. If it's somebody, Elijah would have said go, he would have just said, okay, okay, since I'm a nuisance, I'll go. And some people will even get offended that you drove me away. Okay, I'm going to go. But he said, I'm not going to leave you. I am not going to leave you. Elijah said, go. He said, I'm not going to leave you. And then Elijah said, what do you want? Say a double portion. He said, if you see me, go. You get it. And he, he got it. He got it. 
He got it. He got it. He got it. Your loyalty will be tested. Don't get too offended. Amen. Know what you want and then say, you know what, whatever it takes, I will humble myself. I will stick with this person. I will stay with this person. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter what it takes. Because I know what I'm looking for. I know what I want. Yes. Hallelujah. So our loyalty will be tested. But you see, once God brings this person and you begin to recognize these people, in your, you have to decide in your heart. You have to make up your mind in your heart and say, God, help me. I will stick with this person. Amen. I will stay with this person. You know, a lot of times you read biographies, you have one of the challenges is that when people towards the end of their lives, they are very lonely. Very, very lonely. Because as, as they were going up, sometimes, you know, uh, generally speaking anyways, the, the higher you go in any, any uh, walk of life, you become lonely because there are very few people at the top. It's just, it's just the truth. But you have to try to have relationships that are long life, that are for, for the long haul, lifelong relationships. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's a fear of many people as they go, oh, that they'll be lonely. That there'll be no one, their children will be out of the house and there'll be no one to talk to. So it is important that we develop these relationships and we don't sabotage these relationships. But God will always use a person. And it starts with the heart. So there are people in my life that I don't care what news I hear about them. I'm with them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I am, I am sticking with them. Why? Because there is no man with, there is no person that does not have a weakness. That is perfect. Amen. Amen. That's right. That is right. There's no one. Every one of us. And so when God calls you and you recognize that God has called me to this person, stay. Stay. Hallelujah. Amen. Stay. But your heart, it starts with your heart. You know, in, in the scripture, the Bible says that you should guard your heart with all diligence. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Guard your heart. You know, what, what you become, what you become is not what the economy is. What is your heart? You eventually, what is in your heart will always find expression in the natural. How you react to situations. How you react to different things that happen. You know, that is, let's see what the word of God says. He says, above all else, guard your heart. For it is the wellspring of life. Go to the NLT. New Living Translation. Because what is in the heart? You see, if, if, God, if, if God calls you to somebody and then something happens, you start talking and talking that person down by biting, it is just express, exposing what was in your heart the whole time. That's why the Bible says that out of your heart, out of the abundance of the heart. So that's why we need to guard our hearts. And I'm talking about strategic relationships where God has placed you. Yes. Say, guard your heart above all else for it determines what? The course of your life. Another uh, King James says, keep your heart with all diligence. And keep is an agricultural term to tend, T-E-N-D. When you're tending a garden, what do you do? You take out what? The weeds. And then you put manure, isn't it? And fertilizer. So what we do, especially when we have morning devotion and different things, and we spend time with God, is that we begin to pluck out thoughts of unbelief, of doubt, and unforgiveness. So we are keeping it, we are turning it, we are guarding our heart, we are removing this. You feel an animosity towards your brother or someone that did something to you. You stay before God and say, God, I'm not living here until this thing comes out. Because if it doesn't, the Bible says that when Cain 
made an offering to God. And then Abel, God received that of Abel. And then he saw and refused to receive that from Cain. And he saw Cain was very sad. And God met with Cain and said, why are you sad? If you do the right thing, won't I accept your offering? He said, I see sin lurking around you, about to destroy you. Don't let it. And Cain let sin destroy it because the next day he just said, Abel, let's go for a walk. Oh. And as they were going for a walk, he took out his sword and slaughtered him. God had already warned him. He said, I see in your heart. I see it in your heart. Don't let it, it manifest. I see it. Get rid of it. Do right. And I'll accept your offering. So we turn, we weed out the evil things, the unbelief, the hatred, and then we plant. And in, in planting, you say, God, you have you begin to recognize, God, you've called me here, you've called me to this person. Lord, help me. I will stand with this person. I will pray for them. I will be with them. I will support them, no matter what they go through. Amen. So that was the heart and resolve of. Wrath. And so when the mother-in-law saw that she could not be persuaded, dissuaded, he said, okay, let's go. And so they went. Hallelujah. So the first thing I said, your loyalty will be tested. And for you to pass the test, you must make sure that your heart, from your heart, you have, you have resolved. Hallelujah. You have resolved. Even as couples, married couples, there are certain things that you must resolve that you will never do. So husband, you have to resolve that you never, you know, use your, 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 your spouse or either way as a, as a punching bag. There are things that you have to decide. Amen? Amen? Because out of anger, you know, you can see your hand just, you know, and you think you're Bruce Lee and you're not. <laughs> Amen? But you have to decide. You make that, there are things that you will never do. You never commit adultery. It's a decision. Because if you don't make a decision one day, you know, I tell people all the time, you, ha you, you haven't seen strange women before. You know, a lot of times when we're in church, you see everyone holy, holy, holy. When you travel, you go certain places, you see certain women with certain spirits. If your heart is not established, and you've not made certain decisions, you go somewhere, you say, no one, I'm in France. One preacher used to go to, uh, to, to what, where do they call those places? Uh, those nightclubs where you have women swinging on the pole. What do they call those things? Strip clubs, thank you. Yeah. In France, you go there often, go there often, and one day he came back to America, and they found him, and he was taking cocaine, unfortunately. Uh, he, he was dead, and they saw cocaine. Big preacher with a mega church. With a mega church. So some decisions have to be made. Some things have to be settled with God. Some things you have to say, I would rather die than do this thing. And so Naomi, uh, uh, Ruth said that, I would rather die than leave you. Only death will separate us. Let me tell you, Naomi, only death. Only death. Only death. Things that we have to settle. We have to settle. Our words, our spouses, what we say to one another, we have to settle them. Better walk away. Than to say something that will hurt and bruise your spouse. So the heart. Loyalty has to be settled in the heart. Hallelujah. I say loyalty has to be settled in the heart. And we said that your loyalty will be tested. It will be tested many, many times. The second thing we see was that Ruth served Naomi. Hallelujah. Ruth, let's go to chapter 2. Hallelujah. Now, Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grains behind 
anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out and began to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in the field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. He, they called back. Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, whose young woman is that? The foreman replied, she's the Moabites who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and has worked steadily from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another man's field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my seven girls. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, he showed, he, he, she bowed down and her, fa her face to the ground. She exclaimed, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? Boaz replied, I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Hallelujah. Her loyalty brought her under the everlasting wings of Jehovah. Her loyalty made Jehovah her refuge. Her loyalty. Serving Naomi faithfully from a pure heart. And the news went abroad everywhere. They said, do you know about this woman that has come? She's a woman of character. She is a woman, a decent woman, a faithful woman everywhere. So it even got to Naomi that there is a woman that has come. She's a foreigner. But this one is different. It's not like the others. This one, because most of the women that were outside of Israel were crazy, amen? How many of you know that? Ask Samson. Samson made some crazy ones. They're giving cartridges. Yeah, very crazy women. You don't want to come close to those women. Dangerous. I was, I was listening to uh, uh, one of the young girls. They moved from, from Cargo. They used to be in the church. So one day I heard her singing a song. Hey, wow, there is. Wow, welcome. <laughs> Praise God. Good to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so they moved. But I heard her singing a song. I didn't know the song, but I heard her singing a song. I said, uh, I don't know who sang the song, uh, You Make Me Feel Like a Dangerous Woman. I said, wait a minute. Who will sing such a song? You make me feel like a dangerous woman. So I said, what? Then I went and asked somebody, that what song is your daughter? They said, no, you make me feel like a natural woman. I said, my goodness. <laughs> but anyways, there are some dangerous women. <laughs> dangerous. But guess what? Ruth was not one of them. Her reputation had gone ahead of her. Her faithfulness, her loyalty. Her loyalty. Her lo you see how things begin to move now. Her loyalty to somebody that God, she felt within her that I have to be loyal to this woman brought her now under the everlasting arms of Jehovah. And God became her refuge. But there was more to come because she was loyal. There was more to come. Let's, let's, move, let's move on and see some things. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have given me comfort and have spoken kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servant girls. 
At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here. Have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvester, she, she offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men, even if she gathers among the sheaves, don't embarrass her. Rather, pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up. And don't rebuke her. Hallelujah. See, it's all her loyalty that was causing now favor to gravitate towards her. He said, don't rebuke her. Don't embarrass her. Don't touch her. Hallelujah. Amen. Next verse. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she stretched the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Amen? She, she, she's, she's like some of you, isn't it? You go to a party and you, you take what they call left, uh, what, takeaways. So she took takeaways for her mother-in-law. But it was, she cared. Basically, she cared. She served. She served. She was dead to... The bond was so much that she, she received Naomi as her mother. So I'm going to look after you. I'm going to look. You don't need to worry about old age. I'm here to look after you. You will not suffer. Hallelujah. We're talking about loyalty. The attitude, the heart of a loyal person. She took some leftovers after she had eaten to her mother-in-law. So serving... So, you know, it's something that every one of us have to watch out. Because even me, believe it or not, sometimes I've caught myself taking people that God has called me with for granted. And I have to repent. I say, God, help me. Help me to serve them. Help me to honor them. Hallelujah. Help me not to take them for granted. Because, you see, when you get close to people, sometimes you see their weaknesses and you can become too familiar. And a lot of times you don't receive from people you, you're too familiar with. Amen? Amen? That is why certain people have to, I insist on calling them certain uh, titles and stuff. It's for my sake. It's not for, them, for their sake. Amen? Amen? Because if you, 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 you meet somebody and, you know, you, someone that has worked with the Lord for so many years, and you say, hi, man. Hi, Joe. You know, it's, it's not your hi. You shouldn't be saying hi. Hi, hi what? You, you address them with honor. These are people that have been in the battlefield, that have fought for the body of Christ, have taken bullets, and then you dishonor them. No. Let's not become too familiar with God's servants. Amen? Let's not, let's not follow the, the, the way of Facebook and Internet where people have received ministries from the devil to criticize. They don't do anything, but they, they are good at criticizing every man of God. They criticize. These pastors, they are all thieves. They are arm robber. Have you seen an arm robber before? Should a arm robber visit you with a gun? I'm putting your. Someone told me that they, uh, he was visited once by a thief, and they put a gun. He said, you, there, "There is even prayer you cannot pray. <laughs> even, even the strength to say Jesus, Jesus. You know, some people everything. Jesus, Jesus. He said there was no strength to even say Jesus." Because before you say Jesus, you don't know where, where. <laughs> you call people everything on the internet. Thieves, call people thieves. We should be careful. We should be very, very careful. Let's let's follow God and not the internet and Facebook. Amen. Amen. The pastor was in church, and for whatever reason, the member of the church was in labor. And they were either afraid that if they go to, you know, people have different beliefs. They go to the hospital, maybe the doctors are in, in some society, they will curse their baby. She came to church, and they, with the husband, the pastor became the midwife. <laughs> I'm talking about what pastors go through. 
And then people come and on the internet say, these people are all thieves. You know, we know that they are, they are bad apples. Amen? We know that in the barrel, they are bad apples. But just to take everyone, you know, I shared last week how I went somewhere and a Muslim, I prayed, a Muslim said, you know, pastors are very bad, but when you prayed, I felt that you, you are a right pastor. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. A Muslim guy said, he told me that I'm a Muslim, but I'm going to tell you the truth. So let's be careful how we dishonor people, just talk to people, you know, men of God, servants of God, anyhow. Hallelujah. And last week we talked about honoring parents, so I will not belabor that. But Ruth served. Ruth served. Ruth served Naomi with kindness. And the third thing is obey. She obeyed. Let's look at Ruth chapter 3. Hallelujah. She listened. We live in times where everyone is opinionated. Everyone has an opinion. You tell someone to do this, they say, I'm not doing it. This is how I see it. I'm not doing it. What are you going to do? Let's see what happened here. One day Naomi, her mother-in-law, I'm soon finishing, please. I'm soon finishing. Hallelujah. One day Naomi, her mother-in-law said to her, my daughter, should I not try to find a home for you where you will be well provided for. It's not Boaz. With those seven girls, you have been a kinsman of ours. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself. Let's go to NLT. Hallelujah. Hear the advice of a woman that loves the daughter-in-law. NLT. Now do as I tell you. Do as I tell you. Take a bath. Amen. Some people don't like bath, but take a bath. <laughs> take a bath. And put on perfume. Hallelujah. You know, so, some people are so religious that if they were telling one of these religious uh, people that believe that we are going to heaven, we don't have to look good, you know, we always look like a nurse, a retired nurse. You know what those nurses used to wear back in those days? I mean, my mother was a nurse. No. Say, take a bath and put on perfume. Smell good. And dress in your nicest clothes. Amen. Then go to the threshing floor, but do not let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Then let's see, let's see something here. Be sure to notice where he lies down. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down there, and he will tell you what to do. Wow. I mean, if they tell some very spiritual ladies today to do that, they will bind you and then bind the devil, then bind everyone in your lineage. <laughs> this is just true. That I should do what? You know I'm a holy woman. You want me to bring down myself low to go and uncover his uh, duvet and then lie on his feet? Now, listen, this is not a, 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 it's not a new doctrine, amen? So we're not saying that women should go and start uncovering men's feet. This is just something. We have to be careful what... Pastor Charles, we have to be careful. I was talking to a lady who wanted to get married to an unbeliever, and I said, the Bible says don't be unequally yoked. This is what she told me. He said, God told Hosea to get married to a prostitute, so she's going to get married. I said, no. It was a one-off thing. I was a message to Israel. God was not saying that we now turn into a doctrine such that you go and look for prostitutes and, and, you know, and, and get married to. So, please, it was just a one instruction. Amen. So she did it, and guess what happened? We know the rest of the story, isn't it? Boaz became the kinsman redeemer because there was someone closer to the family than Boaz. And so in that tradition, what happened is that the, 
the closest relative had to buy the land of Ahimelech who had passed away. And so when Boaz offered it to this closest relative, he said, I'm going to do it. He said, wait, wait, wait. But you have to get married also to, to Ruth, to raise up children for Ahimelech, grandchildren, so that his name will not be wiped out, will not perish. And so at that point, the kinsman said, no, you go ahead. And Boaz got married to, to Ruth. Let's go now to Ruth chapter 4 and we'll close. Ruth chapter 4. Verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Then he went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, or the women said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. So one daughter-in-law that was loyal was considered better than seven sons. Than seven sons. Next verse. Then Naomi took the child, laid him in her lap, and cared for him. Next verse, please. The women living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. This, then, is the family line of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of David. Hallelujah. The father of David. All because a woman was loyal. Hallelujah. She was loyal. And of course, David is the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus Christ. Emoa Baitis is the story of redemption. Taken out of the tribe of Israel. Brought in. Hallelujah. God can use anyone. From anywhere. Who is faithful. Hallelujah. God can use anyone. God is going to use you. Amen? Because he's no respecter of persons. Let's stand to our feet. I want you to pray for yourself. Just pray for yourself. That the Lord will help you. I pray that you got something from this message today. And I pray that your life will be changed forever. And that those that God has called you to, you will take it very seriously. You will develop a heart of loyalty to serve, to be faithful. Because great blessings lie in being faithful. So open your mouth and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we pray, O oh God, that we'll be faithful will be loyal in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I ask that you help every one of us to have an understanding and a revelation of this story of somebody that made up their mind to be loyal, to be faithful, and the ultimate outcome. Oh God, I pray that will 
not be faithful to that which is wrong. That the devil will not manipulate the message to mean something else. But rather, Lord God, that the spirit of this message to be faithful to those that you have called us to serve, to follow, to obey, and to do so with our whole hearts. Oh, Father, Lord God, I pray that the end of everyone in their faithfulness will be the end of Ruth, who became blessed, who became prosperous because of her faithfulness. And she was asked him to be better than seven sons. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just sit down for a moment. Just sit down for a moment. I just want to give an opportunity for anyone that has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us that it's appointed once for man to die. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. And after that comes the judgment. We are pilgrims on this earth. And the most important thing is to secure our eternal destiny. And like one preacher of old said, it might be okay to live without Jesus, but no one should attempt to die without Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. We preach Jesus and him crucified, and Jesus is the only way. And Jesus said this, that if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father and his angels. So we want to give an opportunity to anyone. You are not sure of your salvation. You are not sure of your eternal destiny. But we have good news. Jesus came to die for you. And if it was only you that was on the earth, Jesus would have still come to die. So it's a personal savior, not a family savior. It's a personal he came to die for individuals first and foremost so if you're here every head bow and you say pastor god love today i make that decision to follow jesus please just lift up your hand and we'll pray quickly is there anyone anyone Everyone here, turn to your neighbor. Just, just ask your neighbor. Just ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor. You know. Ask your neighbor that are you, do you have Jesus in your life and are you heaven bound? Ask them. Ask them. If they are not sure, tell them to come. If they are not sure. You know, it's very important. It is, it is very, very important. It's very, very important. It, it, will be, it will be sad it will be sad for you to come to church hear the truth and not make it even those of you online it will be very very sad Paul the apostle said that who, who are the most miserable of people if there is no resurrection most miserable because it's better to go to the nightclub to go have all the drinks do drugs and stuff like that if there was no resurrection because there is no life after death but there is life after death so there is no need to be in church hear the message and not commit in fact the bible says that is you'll be more tolerable for those in sodom and gomorrah because if they heard the messages that we are hearing today they would have repented amen so i hope everyone is saved hallelujah praise the lord glory be to god